Pop Special. During the summer, a party of scouts set up tents in a field beside the line. They bustled about arranging things, but were never too busy to wave to the engines as they passed. They've come for their annual camp, exclaimed Duncan's driver. It's a sort of holiday for them. Their leader has been to see Mr. Hugh, and he says that the boys can work on the railway for us. <laughs> Sounds a funny sort of holiday to me, said Duncan doubtfully. Lots of people do it, continued the driver. The Tallyclin Railway, where Sir Handel has gone, has most of its work done like that. The scouts are going to help us. You know that place near the top station where the ditches are bad and we have to be careful when it's wet? Well, the scouts are going to put that right for us. The engines were pleased, because they didn't like having to slow down there in wet or frosty weather. It was anything but frosty at present. Each day the sun shone, and it became hotter and hotter, too hot even for holidaymakers to lie on the beach. Every train was full. The scouts were hot, too. They rested thankfully as the trains passed, but their cheerful waves became wearier as the week wore on. On the final day of their camp, Duncan toiled uphill with the last train. He was looking forward to a rest under the trees at the top station. As Duncan neared the place where the scouts were working, he whistled to warn them he was coming. Then he saw a figure crossing the line in front of the train. Duncan's driver put a hand on his brake. Steady on, Duncan, he warned. It looks as if the scout's leader wants us to stop for something. Duncan drew gently to a halt, and the leader climbed onto the step of his cab. Is anything wrong? the driver asked anxiously. Not yet, replied the leader, but I'm afraid there might be unless the boys have a drink. Can you drop off some pop or something when you next pass, please? No problem, replied the driver. I'll see the refreshment lady when we reach the top station. But when they got there, the driver came back from the refreshment room with a long face. Not a bottle to be had, he moaned to Duncan. Everyone's as thirsty as those boys. So now what? Duncan didn't know. He thought so hard that he began to feel thirsty himself. Then, suddenly, an idea came to him. Isn't there a shop near the station by the lake, he said. Perhaps the lady there... Of course, interrupted the fireman excitedly. We'll leave the coaches here while Duncan takes something to the boys. We can just get back here before the train is due to leave. But we must hurry. While the station master telephoned to warn the shop lady, Duncan set off. The shop lady met them at the station. I haven't much myself, she said, but the lads are welcome to what there is. A little later, the scouts heard a whistle, and Duncan puffed into sight. He stopped beside them, and his driver handed down the drinks. The scouts cheered him. Not me, he told them. It was Duncan's idea. So they cheered again, and thanked Duncan instead. It's nothing, he said modestly. You're helping us. It's only fair we should help you, too.